Did you know that in today's world, approximately 70-80% of the world's population consumes tea? Tea is a widely consumed beverage globally, with significant popularity in various cultures and regions. But here's the thing. Have you ever stopped to wonder just how beneficial tea can be for your health? Sure, you might have heard some whispers about tea being harmful. But what if I told you that's not true? What if I told you that when you consume tea the right way, it can work wonders for your body, potentially eliminating many diseases? Intrigued? Well, stick around, because in this video, we're diving deep into the world of tea. From how to brew it just right, to the best times to sip and the essential ingredients you need for optimal health benefits. But here's the catch. If you think drinking tea is just about boiling some water and tossing in a tea bag, you might want to think again. Consuming anything in the wrong way can turn even the purest substance into poison. And that's where the art of tea making comes in. Picture this. Once upon a time there was a wise Buddhist monk, a true master of Ayurveda, sharing his wisdom on health with a curious crowd in a bustling city. Among them, a young man stood up with a burning question. He asked the monk, I've heard rumors that tea is poison, yet everyone around me drinks it and stays healthy. How can this be? The monk smiled knowingly and replied, My son, tea itself is not poison. It's all about how you brew and drink it. Today I'll reveal the secrets of tea making to you. Secrets that could turn your tea into a healing elixir. Then the monk spoke, Son, today I'll let you in on the secrets of tea. Secrets that can turn it into a potion for your well-being. As the young man leaned forward, eager to learn, the monk continued, You see, it's said that adding just three simple things to your tea can make it a healthy elixir. But that's not all. The monk revealed a fascinating truth about tea, a truth that could change everything. He whispered about the many antioxidants found in every cup, each one bringing its own benefits to your health. However, there's a twist in the story. He then said to the man, but just sipping tea won't do. You need to brew it right as well as adding in these three special things. As the young man listened intently, the monk's words hung in the air, a promise of better health waiting to be realized. Because, he concluded, with these secrets, your tea won't just be a nice beverage to drink, but keep you healthy, youthful, and it'll make you stronger as well. But then revealed by the monk, with a knowing look he says, listen closely for the first ingredient to grace your tea must be ginger. Yes, ginger, a powerful medicinal treasure revered in ancient traditions. As the crowd leans in, captivated by his words, the monk delves deeper into the wonders of ginger. In Ayurveda, ginger is hailed as a potent remedy, revered for its ability to ignite the digestive fire and soothe ailments. But that's not all. With a subtle shift in tone, the monk explains the multitude of benefits ginger brings. You see, ginger isn't just a spice, it's a healer. From removing gas and preventing flatulence to relieving cramps and soothing indigestion, ginger is a true ally. As the audience absorbs this wealth of knowledge, the monk continues to unravel Ginger's remarkable properties. Indeed, Ginger aids in reducing cholesterol, controlling blood pressure, and preventing heart ailments. Its powerful substance, Gingerol, reduces joint and muscle pain, making it a valuable treatment for inflammatory diseases. And there's more. Ginger also lends a hand in asthma treatment by relaxing airway muscles and reducing swelling, offering relief to those in need. And so in Ginger lies the key to unlocking a world of health and vitality. A journey that promises relief from pain, a bolstered immune system, and a stronger digestive tract. Then the monk tells the man the second thing that you should add. Then the monk reveals the second secret. But there's more to this magical brew, my friends. The addition of cinnamon to your tea. Yes, cinnamon. A humble spice with extraordinary powers, both in our food and in our health. As the monk explains, cinnamon is no ordinary spice. It's packed with essential nutrients like protein, calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, phosphorus, manganese, copper, carbohydrate, antioxidant, antibacterial, and antifungal. These elements not only keep us healthy, but also offer protection against various ailments. However, the real magic happens when cinnamon meets your tea. Not only does it lend a delightful aroma, but it also works wonders on your blood sugar levels. It's like adding a touch of natural sweetness to your cup. But that's not all. Cinnamon has a hidden talent. It's a warrior against infections and a guardian of our cardiovascular health. It lowers blood sugar, reduces blood pressure, and even clears clogged arteries, reducing the risk of heart troubles. And if that wasn't enough, 
Cinnamon comes to the rescue when joints ache and muscles tense. It's a natural pain reliever, easing discomfort and promoting well-being. Plus, it aids in weight loss and soothes stomach troubles, boosting metabolism and offering relief from various ailments including liver issues and cancer concerns. Remember the monk's wisdom, for in the simple act of adding cinnamon, we unlock a world of health and vitality, where every sip brings us closer to wellness. The Buddhist monk then explains to the man the third thing that you should add. As the monk reveals cardamom, then goes on to explain this is no ordinary spice. It's a powerhouse of nutrients that strengthen your nerves, fortify your digestive system, and boost your energy levels. But that's just the beginning of its tale. For cardamom is a warrior against diseases, both minor and chronic. Its anti-inflammatory properties wage war against cancer, from mouth to skin. With its abundance of magnesium and potassium, it keeps your blood pressure in check and your circulation flowing smoothly. However, the magic of cardamom doesn't stop there. It's a remedy for all sorts of stomach troubles, from gas to acidity, and an aid for respiratory ailments like asthma. Its antioxidant elements even regulate insulin levels and combat allergies and inflammation. Cardamom isn't just a spice, it's a healer of wounds, both physical and mental. It soothes sore throats, calms the mind, and even aids in weight management by curbing fungal infections and digestive issues. Then the monk says to the young man, now you must understand how to properly make the tea. Then the person asked, how do I make the tea for maximum health? Don't you just boil water? The monk explained, let's start with the basics. Swap out those tea bags for loose leaf tea, as loose leaf is the most potent tea, not just tea scraps. And when it comes to mixing, don't use cow's milk. The reason is that it might block some of the tea's goodness. Research has shown that the fat in cow's milk can encapsulate or surround the beneficial compounds in tea, preventing them from being absorbed properly by the body. This means that you might not get all the health benefits that tea has to offer if you drink it with cow's milk. Additionally, some research suggests that the proteins in cow's milk may interfere with the absorption of certain antioxidants in tea, further reducing its health benefits. However, it's essential to note that these studies are still ongoing, and individual responses to tea and milk can vary. The monk went on to explain, to try using nut milks without any additives such as emulsifiers that could cause digestive issues and problems in your gut. The monk went on to explain the importance of the brewing process. If you're making a single cup, begin with one or two cups of water. Typically, for one to two cups of tea, you might add about a quarter to a half teaspoon of chopped ginger and quarter teaspoon of cinnamon powder. Adjust the amounts according to your taste preferences and desired strength of flavor. For one or two cups of tea, you typically only need one cardamom pod. Then add the whole pod to the water while steeping. As for the amount, about one or two cardamom pods should suffice for a mild flavor, but you can adjust and add more pods based on your preference. Then the monk explained that different teas require different water temperatures. For delicate white tea, aim for around 175 Fahrenheit or 80 Celsius. Green tea prefers a slightly warmer 180-185 Fahrenheit or 82-85 Celsius. And for robust black tea, go for a rolling boil at 212 Fahrenheit or 100 Celsius. The monk also explained how the steeping times also vary. White tea needs about 4 to 5 minutes, green tea 2 to 3 minutes, and black tea 3 to 5 minutes. The monk then made sure to stress the point that patience is key. It would be best if you let your tea sit for a little after brewing. You don't want to drink it immediately, especially standing up. For maximum health benefits, you want to be sitting down as it absorbs and digests better for health. Also, the monk went on to say that you want to wait until the tea cools to around 140 Fahrenheit, or 60 Celsius, before drinking, believing it to be the ideal temperature for health. Then the monk explained how it's best to consume your tea plain, but many want to add things to sweeten their tea. Refined sugar is not a good way, and is like taking something healthy and turning it into a sweet toxin or slow poison. There are plenty of healthier alternatives. If you must, look into natural sweeteners like maple syrup, monk fruit extract, raw local honey, or the traditional jaggery, a natural sweetener rich in minerals and flavor. The monk advised the young man to be careful about drinking tea. He warned that it's not good to drink tea right after eating because it has something called tannins that makes it hard for our bodies to absorb iron. So, it's best to wait at least two or three hours after a meal before having tea. Also, it's not good to drink too much tea. Tea has caffeine which, if we have too much, can make us feel anxious and stressed. 
it might even cause problems with our sleep and heart. Even though tea can sometimes be good for our heart, having too much caffeine from tea can actually cause heart problems and trouble sleeping. Drinking too much tea can also make us feel sick, especially if we have problems with our stomach or heartburn. And if someone is pregnant, it's best for them to avoid drinking too much tea because it can affect the baby's weight and health. So it's important to enjoy tea, but not too much. The monk finished with his last point saying, there are five amazing benefits of drinking tea this way. You can have up to two or three cups a day. First, it keeps your stomach happy. Tea made like this helps reduce stomach problems caused by swelling. Secondly, it can help with diabetes. Third, it's good for your hair and skin. Fourth, it boosts your immunity. Tea is full of antioxidants that make your immune system stronger. And finally, it's good for your brain. It keeps your brain cells healthy, improves blood flow, and makes you sharper and more alert. So, here's why drinking tea in this manner is so good for you and can really make a difference in how you feel every day. If you like this story, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more stories like this. Take care, and see you next time.